I want you to listen to this. Is this sound familiar in your house? Do you know that this has become one of the serious and the most dangerous traps of the enemy right now to steal the mind of your children? Well, don't go anywhere because I'll be right back with an important information for every parent and anyone who has a desire to be a parent soon. Welcome back, my dear friend. This is Pastor Isaac Apu, and this is the truth that set free. Today, we are going to talk about a very, very important subject, and I've entitled it, Who Controls the Remote Control in Your House? We want to talk about the effect of cartoons on the mind of young children today. Before we continue, I want you to know that we are here every Sunday, 7 o'clock in the morning, on this station, Hope TV Ghana. So if you have not been listening or if you have not been watching, be sure to mark it on your calendar so that every Sunday you meet us and you will be blessed. If you're also watching this on our YouTube page, please make sure you click on the subscribe button right now. Once you click it, press the bell icon so that anytime time that we post the content, you will be notified and you will be the first to be blessed with the Word of God. Now, the sound that I played when this video was beginning, it's a very, very popular sound in the house of many people watching today. Even if you are not a, a, a mother or a father, I know probably you have come across um, a little child who is watching cartoons, especially on YouTube, with that sound. That is one of the most popular children channels on YouTube, Coco Melon. And they produce one of the most amazing cartoons for children, preschoolers, you know, toddlers, and even those in um, junior high schools, they all enjoy cartoons from Coco Melon. Now, we're not just here to talk about Coco Melon, but we are here to talk about cartoons. Who controls the remote in your house? Is it your kids or you, the father or the mother? It would interest you to know that especially during the vacations, children are the ones who control the remote control in the house. My kids, for example, they do that all the time. Sometimes be looking for the remote control and you don't know where they hide it because they want to have total control in order for them to enjoy the cartoons that are their favorite. You see, these days, it is like no child's day is complete without cartoons. They have become an inevitable part of every child's life today. You know, small boys, preschoolers, young boys, imagine themselves to be superheroes. They imagine themselves to be Spider-Man, you know. They imagine themselves to be, you know, this powerful patrol team in the Power Patrol cartoons that they love. Young girls, you know, fantasize about being princess. They fantasize about being Princess Elsa, Princess Anna, and so forth and so forth. These are cartoon characters that our kids are watching. You see, a lot of children today have developed so much interest in watching cartoons that they prefer staying glued to the TV or to the smartphones of their parents rather than engaging in outdoor play activities. And that is a very serious thing. In fact, these days, it would interest you to know, and I'm, this thing I'm about to say, a lot of you parents, you are aware. The life of our children, it is filled with nothing but cartoons. From their exercise book, the cover, the back covers of the exercise books, they are all filled with cartoon characters to their school bags. Even the shirts and the dresses that they wear, they are full of cartoon pictures and here and there. And it is something that as parents, we need to understand what is really happening and how these powerful images are shaping the mind of our children, both positively and then negatively. In fact, a research that was conducted on the impact of cartoons on school-going children revealed that most of the kids, that is about 80% of children, spend time in watching cartoons. And moreover, Cartoon Network and, and cartoons that is shown on Netflix and other, you know, important uh, streaming services as the most favorite cartoons of, of children today. In fact, 84% of children who watch cartoons 
mostly watch it on Cartoon Network. You know, Cartoon Network has been around for many years now. When we were all kids, we used to watch Cartoon Network, you know, Scooby-Doo, um, Cow and Chicken, and all these, you know, cartoons that I'm talking about. These are the things that children today spend most of their time doing. Most of the students, according to this research, about 65% of students spend about one to three hours every single day watching cartoons on television instead of taking part in outdoor lecture activities. And so it can be said that um, looking at the statistics and looking at the numbers, cartoons has become the most favorite hobby of children today. Gone are the days where children have hobbies of going outside to play and engage in outdoor activities. These days, children spend all their time, especially their spare times, watching cartoons. You see, even though there are some good effects or good impacts that these cartoons are making in the lives of our children. For example, it helps them in learning, it helps them in solving certain problems. Um, it helps them to even be able to understand and able to express themselves, get uh, understand of certain English vocabularies here and there. They incorporate values like friendship, you know, community, family, and sometimes, you know, a good sense of humor and how to um, practice good, especially in the face of evil and all that. They learn some of these things. These are positive. But it will interest you to know there are some hidden and dangerous side effects of cartoons on the mind of children that as a parent you ought to be aware of. So before we continue and see how we can take full control of the remotes (laughs) that we have in our house, there are four serious, in fact, there are some serious side effects very serious ones that some of them are so evil about cartoons that I want to share with you. And as a parent, or even if you are not a parent yet, and you intend to get married and give birth, you need to understand these things so that you don't use cartoons or television as a way of training up your children. The first side effect that I want to share with you is that cartoons leads to cravings and compulsion. Let me explain. You see, watching cartoons today has become a grave psychological problem that many parents are not even aware. A lot of children are so obsessed with watching cartoons on TV and smartphones on tablets and and, and, and other, you know, smart devices so much that they've started craving for it. Some children crave for cartoons like an alcoholic crave for alcoholic drink. Some crave for cartoons like somebody who smokes cannot go a day without smoking. And what makes it even more serious is the fact that these days when children are bored, instead of getting involved in outdoor activities, they will rather spend time watching cartoons. Some of them to the extent of taking their mother's or their father's smartphones and hiding somewhere in the house to go to YouTube and watch Coco Melon or their favorite cartoons. Now, this kind of cartoon craving, I want you to understand me as a mother or a father you're watching. This type of cartoon craving has become an addiction. And many psychologists are, are, are seeing the dangers in these things. Most kids have become addicted to cartoons. In fact, the unfortunate aspect about this addiction is that some parents unknowingly use this addiction to cartoons by their kids to their advantage. You may be asking, how do they do that? You see, when some parents are in public places, especially in church, or they've gone for a a, a function and there are people there and their kids are disturbed, instead of looking for a proper way to keep them quiet, what some parents do is to hand over their smartphone to the child, for the child to watch cartoons. So much that these days, some children can only be silenced with cartoons. And that is very serious. This is one of the most dangerous side effects of cartoons on the mind of our kids. Children as as early as two years, three years, four years have become addicted to cartoons. They have become addicted to screens so much that when they want to watch cartoons, nothing 
will stop them from watching cartoons. The second side effect of cartoons on the minds of children is that too much cartoons may lead to violence and aggressive behavior in kids. In fact, when you look at how many children behave these days, it is just like the cartoon characters that they watch. In fact, as I said earlier on, some of them think that they have superpowers. Some time ago, it was in the news that a little child, I think it was four years or five years, stood on top of a, um, a story building and jumped with, with a cape, you know, around his neck like Superman because he has just finished watching a Superman cartoons and he thought that he could also fly. Unfortunately, though the child did not die, he was seriously injured. When they watch Power Patrol and all these superhero cartoon movies, they are filled with so much aggression that they want to practice on other children. In fact, recent pediatric researchers have reported that high levels of violence in cartoons make children more aggressive. In some of the most popular cartoon shows, we see that characters, you know, sometimes hit each other or sometimes even make each other fall from a height. And, and one thing about cartoons is that when the characters fall from a very, you know, high mountains or a tall, a, a, a tall building, they do not get hit. Sometimes they become flat and then they will rise up again. Now, some of these things makes the children think that when they even fall down, that will happen to them. Some of them unknowingly think that when they hit somebody or when they push somebody from a tall building and they fall down, they will just get up because of what they see in cartoons. Because in the cartoons, they see that they fall down and then they rise up. And so they don't see that, that there are any rare dangerous consequences some, to some of these um, actions. Some of them would hit each other in school in places that they shouldn't hit. Some of them would, would, would kick other children so hard because they think that nothing would really happen. I want you to watch this unfortunate video. It's very difficult to watch. Now, what you can see here is a toddler, you know, repeatedly. It's very difficult. I'm sorry um, for showing you, you this. You know, if you cannot watch, you can just um, wait. It's just going to go by very soon. But you see this toddler repeatedly hitting the stomach and kicking this little child. You know, some of these violence, not all do, but some of these violence are as a result of the kind of cartoons that the kids are watching. The cartoons they are watching is making the kids more aggressive. They are becoming more violent. They don't care about hitting each other. They are learning how to use guns in cartoons. They are learning serious aggressive behaviors that children at tender ages, as our kids, should not be exposed to. Let me continue. Number three, bad attitude and stubborn behaviors. When children are exposed to a lot of cartoons from the early stages, they tend to develop bad attitude. They tend to become stubborn because of what they see. You see, being disobedient and lack of empathy is one of the most serious side effects of cartoons these days. For example, if a character in a cartoon is undisciplined and is very rude to his or her parent, the children who watch it may try to imitate that. Now, apart from this, some children, when they watch cartoons, they develop mischievous and then loud cartoon characters. They, they, you see them, they are always mischievous, always um, playing pranks on each other and stuff like that. And that is not what, as Christians, we should be teaching our children. Now, with these side effects, there are two more side effects that are very, very serious. In fact, the entire purpose of this message is to highlight some of these side effects of cartoons so that as parents we take immediate action before our children are lost to the traps of the devil. Now, the fourth side effect of cartoons, and now this is one of the most serious side effects that I want to be talking about. This is ver- this is like the main agenda of cartoons these days, and that is to introduce kids to satanism. Yes, you heard me right, Satanism. In fact, Satanism or the worship of Satan is found in many cartoons that our children, especially preschoolers and toddlers, are consuming today. They are watching how to practice Satanism and occultism right in the comfort of your own living room. And many parents are not even aware. Let me share a few with you. 
Recently, Walt Disney, you know Walt Disney, these are, you know, the, 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 the largest producer of children content in the world. Walt, Walt Disney recently released an animated series entitled Little Demon. Now, in this cartoon series, I mean, this whole series about a woman who had sexual encounter with Satan and gave birth to his daughter, the Antichrist. I cannot show you even an excerpt of these cartoons because it is so dark and demonic that children should not even be thinking about them, more or less, to watch them. But you see, unfortunately, many of us parents are not even aware of what is happening. We think, oh, it's just cartoons. Some parents will not allow their kids to watch any movie because they contain violence and other improper activities. But they would allow their kids to watch any cartoons. But unknown to them, some of these cartoons are full of demonic activities like you know, the little demon that was released recently. Now, the cartoon industry is playing light with a serious biblical issue. Demons are real. We know that. Many people are possessed with demonic spirit. In many cartoons, children are made to believe that dragons are really friendly and must be liked. But in the Bible, the dragon is a symbol of Satan, according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. In fact, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, he says he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. So the dragon is a symbol of Satan himself, not some playful creature that people can play with or must like. But the cartoon world or the cartoon industry is gradually brainwashing our kids to believe that dragons are lovable creatures. They are here to guide you. They are here to help you. They are here to protect you. That is not true. You see, we need to be very careful because the devil is very cunning. The devil today is using these seemingly innocent characters to brainwash our kids to accept demons and satanism. Disney's popular cartoons called Moana and Frozen introduce children all over the world to idol worship. I know you are shocked because I'm sure that a lot of you, your kids have watched Moana and, and Frozen before. My kids watched it. I didn't even know the secret behind these things. Now, in Moana, the young girl in that cartoons, very popular cartoons, a lot of people, kids have watched it. It's all over on their size books, their school bags, everywhere. These are some of the most popular cartoons today. Moana and then um, um, Frozen. But in Moana, there is this young girl in Moana. Now, this young girl, that is her name. Her name is Moana. Now, this girl was helped in the cartoon by the spirit of the sea that we, we call Mami Water. To restore the eye of graffiti with the help of a fallen god called Maui in that cartoon. Unfortunately, many kids watched and have watched and are watching Moana. Unaware to them, these are evil characters that have been painted to be good. This is serious. In Frozen, which is also a very, very extremely popular cartoon, in Frozen, the devil brainwashed kids that it is okay to be a witch and then accept it. Because in Frozen, Princess Elsa was a witch who ran away because of her powers, but later was accepted to be good by her country folks and, and came back to be a queen again. Now, the Bible is very serious about witchcraft. It is nothing to double with or to even be entertained with. It is condemned. Because anyone who practices witchcraft is an enemy of righteousness and a child of the devil. When you read Galatians chapter 5 verse 20, the witchcraft is listed among the manifest works of the flesh. Again, in Exodus chapter 22 verse number 18, the Bible says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And so witchcraft is not something that kids should be exposed to. But the enemy, through Frozen, this popular cartoon, has introduced many children to witchcraft. Now, in that cartoon, Frozen, there is a song that was sung by Princess Elsa, or Princess Elsa as they call her. Now, Princess Elsa, when she was found that she was a witch, had to run away because initially her town folks did not want to accept her. She ran away. Now, when she ran away, when she finally got to where she put up her, you know, evil mansion, she sang a song, and the song 
is a song that is on the lips of every child today. The title of the song is Let It Go. Now, Let It Go show that she is now free to practice her witchcraft. Now, a part of the song exposes the demonic agenda of the devil in this particular cartoon. One part of the song, as you can see on the screen, it says, It is time to see what I can do to test the limit and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I am free. Did you get that? You may be wondering, how bad is this thing? You see, no right, no rules, no wrong. This is exactly what the famous satanist Alistair Crowley said in her tenfold agenda for the world by Satan. In, in that tenfold agenda, Alistair Crowley said, Do as thou willest, and thus shall be the whole of the law. In other words, what Elsa was saying in these cartoons to children is that as children, you don't have to allow anyone to restrict you. You don't have to obey any rules. No right, no wrong, no rules. This is very serious. So you may be wondering, why are my kids becoming stubborn? Why are they not respecting me? Why are they not obeying my rules? Because a witch through a cartoon has told them, there are no rights. There's nothing like right or wrong. There are no rules. This is serious. Parent, it is time to take control of the remote in your house. The last one I want to share with you is that the devil is using these innocent cartoons to introduce our children to homosexuality and soft pornography. Now, this is, this is another important reason why every parent must take hold of the control of the remote of their TVs right now. We need to take hold and control what the kids are watching. The enemy is using cartoons to introduce our kids to gay and lesbian agenda. You see, some of the most popular cartoons, I'm going to be sharing some popular cartoons that kids are watching today that are promoting gay agenda. It will shock you. Some of the popular cartoons children watch today, you see boys and boys kissing girls and girls kissing. This is nothing but homosexual. A very popular cartoon series for kids on Netflix that came out recently. You know, my kids and I were even watching. I was watching with them until the last episode where we discovered that it was promoting a lesbian agenda. The title of that cartoon is on Netflix, entitled Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous. Now, in the final season, two girls fell in love and kissed on screen for our kids to watch. You can see. I, I can't show you the video, but you can see the picture. What you see here, these are two girls in a cartoon series that Christian young people are watching. This is serious. Now, I want you to listen to, I'm just going to be reading some stuff to you. Listen to what the homosexual community wrote on their website. And the website is pride.com. Listen, they say, we've got a long way to go. But nowadays, there's so much amazing LGBT plus representation in animated children's shows, giving a whole new generation of young queer kids the much needed representation and visibility they need. Did you get that? So these homosexuals, they are actually behind some of these things that our kids are watching. In fact, there are several instances where one of the most popular children cartoon series, SpongeBob and SquarePants, one, there, there are several instances where SpongeBob and SquarePants show gay and lesbian activities. Now, the picture you see here is a photo showing SpongeBob showing the gay colors. Now, listen to what the homosexual website say about SpongeBob and SquarePants. They say, during the Pride Month 2020, Nickelodeon tweeted a series of rainbow-colored portraits of the network's LGBT plus actors and characters that included Michael D. Cohan, a trans actor from Harry Danger, Cora, our favorite um, bisexual hero from The Legend of Cora, and the square yellow sea sponge himself, officially confirming SpongeBob SquarePants status as a long-running LGBT plus character and icon. Shocking. SpongeBob SquarePants. This is one of the all-time favorite cartoons for children. This cartoon is pushing homosexual agenda. In fact, 
the those who who speak for them, the, the those who do the voiceover, as you hear the names, they are all homosexuals, transgenders, and bisexuals. All of them. My dear father, my dear mother, parents watching me today, it is time to take control of the remote in your house. But how do we do that? Number one, spend time teaching them the word of God. When you read it, Tommy chapter 11, verse 19, the word of God says, teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Spend time teaching your children. No, don't, don't leave that in the hands of pastors or elders alone. Have special time with your kids and let them understand the word of God from you. From your morning devotions, from weekly Bible studies, spend time teaching them. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 6, the word of God says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So spend time teaching your kid the word of God. Number two, determine what they watch. You see, do not leave your kids to decide what to watch on TV. You must know the times the right content is shown on TV and determine or you decide what and when they should watch on TV or on smartphones. Go through the cartoons that they watch and understand what it is about. Is it wholesome for the mind of your kids? Would it help them to grow in the knowledge of godliness? Would it help them to understand how to treat each other and how to love and respect each other? As a parent, you see, they are your kids. You don't have to let these ones just slide. Know what they are watching and decide that this is what you can watch, this one you cannot watch. Because at the end of the day, if they are going to grow to, to, to the knowledge of God, then you will have to help them in that direction. Listen, you must decide which content, which cartoons, and which TV programs they have to watch. Once they are finished watching, the TV must be off. And that is it. That is how it's supposed to be. Number three, control screen time. Now, this is something that we may have to spend another time talking about, screen time. You see, too much screen time can make it very hard for your children to sleep at night. It raises your child's risk for attention problems, anxiety, and depression. In fact, as children, children who are under two, they should not even watch television at all. This is very, very important. Any child under two years should not be exposed to screens as that can affect the mind of that young child. Limit time to one hour per day. If possible, one hour per day for children who are two years and above time. And this screen time should decrease with time. They should be encouraged to play more rather than to watch more. Again, be a good role model as a parent. Decrease your own screen time. You know, some these days, a lot of parents are not good role models because they themselves can't get their eyes off their screens. And it helps the kids to also do that. Again, if you want to reduce screen time, set password on your TV, especially those who use DSTV. You can use the parental control settings to determine when and what they can watch. And finally, challenge your family to go sometimes a week or two without TV. Uh, I call it TV fasting. This all will help the kids to be able to concentrate on what is good. Remember, God's word says train up a child the way he should go. So that when he grows, he will not depart from it. Don't let television be the teacher for your parent. The devil is using that medium to destroy the future and the destinies of our kids. It is time as parents we take back the remote from our kids. So that we will determine what they watch. You bought the TV with with your own money. Don't let that device there destroy your children. It is time. To help your kids grow in the Lord by leading them to the word of God, not to Spongebob or Power Patrol or Coco Melon or any cartoon character. Remember, God's word says we shall hear the truth and the truth shall set us free. If you have any questions based on this presentation, our WhatsApp number is on the screen. Make sure you get to us and God is going to help you with the answers. Remember, we are here every Sunday, 7 o'clock in the morning. Be sure to join us next week for another important truth that will set you free. If you have not already subscribed to our YouTube, please click on the subscribe right now so that you don't miss the next episode. Until we meet again, remember, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Shalom.